Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slant Lens, we're gonna take a look at lens choice and camera settings for doing a family portrait out on location. I've got the Den Dolls and the Ikes here with me today. They're gonna to be our models as we show you how to set up the scene, how to light it, how to choose that location, and then most importantly, how to pose the people. It's not easy with seven people. You want that rise and fall, rise and fall, beautiful masters kind of posing. So let's get started and see what we can do. Special thanks to Sal Digital for sponsoring this video. They're gonna provide prints for the Ikes and the Denon Dolls. You'll see us deliver those prints in another video. So my lens choice when I'm photographing a family is a zoom lens. I'm going to use a 28 to 75, 2.8. It's a Tamron lens for the Sony camera. I love this lens because it gives me a range. I'm gonna to want to do a lot of these at 50 millimeters and it gives me a 50 millimeters, but it also gives me all the way up to 75, which is getting very close to an 85. That allows me to get in tighter. It brings the background in, makes the background a little more out of focus. If I can get back far enough, I'll shoot some of that big family with that 75. I'll shoot a lot of them at 50, and I may even shoot some at 35, where I see more contextually the whole scene, and it just gives me a lot of options. I've got two different families here, so I'm gonna shoot three people, I'm gonna do two people, I'm gonna do one person. This allows me to jump back and forth. I can zoom in tighter for a single person, and come out to 50 millimeters for two people. It just gives me a lot of options. So I love working on that 28 to 75. I can just shoot, 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 and it just gives me all the options that I really love. So there's a look at 35, 50, and 75. The 35, we see a lot of the trees, and I think it kind of looks too much away from the family, creates too much sky. Whereas the 50 looks just right straight down the trees and gives us a nice, beautiful background. 75 is nice, but I feel like it brings that background in a little too close and it doesn't, it's not really needed. I think the 50 looks perfect for this setup. I generally end up on a 50 millimeter lens just because it allows me to be in close to the family. I can work with them, get everyone framed. It's just an easy way to work and it gives me a beautiful uh, look at the background. So there's a look at uh, lens choice. So that 28 to 75 just gives me all the options that I really love and I can work quickly with it. That's why I use a zoom lens. So for the ISO and white balance, I set the ISO at 100. I may push that up to 200 if I need to, but I think I'm going to stay pretty much at 100. Uh, that gives me a really nice fine detail on the sensor, make it so I can blow this up to a great print. Then I'll set the white balance at 6,000 degrees, which matches strobe and is a little bit warm, which will make the portrait look really nice. Now let's set our aperture. The aperture is a little tricky because I've got two layers of people here. I'll focus on the front row at F4, it should hold the back row. Uh, I'd love to go to 2.8, but it won't hold the back row, and I feel like that's gonna be too dangerous. So I'm gonna go to F4. I may need to go to 5.6, just so I can make sure that the people in the front and the back are in focus. Remember, this is gonna get, be blown up to a large print, and if Brian in the back row is out of focus, he's not gonna be happy with me. So if you look at 2.8, I'm not holding the back row very well. At four, I'm starting to, and at five, six, I'm definitely comfortable. I'm gonna shoot at five, six just for safety reasons. What I love about wide open is that it makes the background all fall out of focus and it just looks so beautiful. So I don't wanna to go to just something deep like F8. That just brings all that background into focus and it keeps the uh, composition from being simple. I want that background to fall out of focus, so I'm gonna to try to right to the edge. I'm gonna go five, six, I may shoot a few at four, just to make sure that, uh, just to see if I can get away with it. It's important when you set this composition up that you don't get people way forward and way back because now you're in trouble. You gotta keep them pretty close together, and let that rise and fall happen in a tight frame work next to each other, and that's gonna help keep them in a, an area that'll keep them in focus at a much shallower depth of field and let the background fall out of focus. Definitely at 5.6, I'm comfortable. I got the, everyone in focus, so 5.6. So let's set our shutter. The shutter is super important because the shutter is going to allow the ambient light to either become brighter or darker. A longer shutter will make it brighter. A shorter shutter is going to make it darker. We need to blend it together. I'll start at 250, which is the fastest that my strobes will sync uh, with the camera. 
and then I'm going to just lengthen that shutter until it starts to blend the two together. So it's really very much a dance. You have to change it as the light changes because as the light changes, you'll need to lengthen it. As it gets darker, you want to lengthen it. In this case, the sun is going down. We're going to want to lengthen it as that sun goes down. So I'll start at 250 and I'm going to lengthen it till it looks right with our strobes. So this is the Sal Digital print that the family chose. It's a gallery print, that acrylic surface. It's reinforced with aluminum, so it's very strong. It'll be a nice size print they're gonna put up on the wall. It's got seven colors, UV print. It's a beautiful print, a beautiful look. It's gonna look modern on the wall. So I'm excited to see this when we deliver it to the family. The first thing I look for when I'm going to photograph a family is a place just like this. I'm in the shade, complete shade. I can now come in and put my light in with my strobes and paint the light on my family. It gives me complete control for a long period of time, but I'm looking out into beautiful sunlight. There's depth, there's light depth behind me. So I'm in the shade and then I want that sun to either be behind me or to the side. It gives me a little bit of rim light and makes it so I have complete control of the light on their faces. All right, let's talk about posing here. We have seven people. The goal is to give ourselves a rise and a fall, rise and fall. It's a very much a master's painting kind of way to uh, compose. We want the, the eye to just kind of move from person to person to person to person, and they want to give us just a little kind of let down at the end. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm looking at this image and I don't want to put my tallest person in the middle because that builds it in a pyramid up to the middle. I don't want that. I want it to push off to one side. So I'm going to have uh, Brian come in. Brian's gonna be our tallest person here and I'm gonna put him just slightly to one side in the background. Then I'm gonna bring Scott in. He's gonna be just off from uh, Brian's side. So we're already starting. It's kind of rise, it's coming up. Then Kalia, let's slide, slide Kalia right in there. So gentlemen, don't square yourself out too much. Just turn slightly, not too much. Uh, ladies are gonna definitely wanna turn in. There you go. And now let's bring in mom. Come on in, Amy. Let's slide to you right here. Kayla, come on in. Kayla right there. And you'll turn towards your mom. There you go, and slide in. So I want to make sure, Amy, you get between Kalia and Brian. So come out just a little bit there, Kalia. Just right in there, Brian, come over just a hair. I, want to, I don't want the heads to start lining up with each other. Okay, so now we'll get Brody here, and we're going to leave one little spot there for Bryce. Come on in, Bryce. Bryce becomes our arabesque. This is what's called an arabesque. Okay, so Bryce is our arabesque. And what this means is we're going to have the, it's going to come up to Scott, and it's going to drop down to Bryce. Then we're going to come up from Kayla up to Brian, down to mom here. Then we're gonna come up to Kalia, and Kalia's arm is gonna lead us off to the end and kind of finish it, a little punctuation on the end. So we want everyone has their head space. Uh, the hardest point for me is right here because we've got mom and daughter, they're turned towards each other and that, yeah, just wanna keep ourselves as close as we can. And Bryce, we wanna lean on you. Bryce kind of lets us down, his feet come down, he's lower. He gives us an excuse to look down there, but we wanna keep your head fairly close right in there, Bryce, right about there. All right, this looks really nice. So this is a very traditional kind of setup here. What I love about this type of setup, and it's kind of, people love to do these really modern, creative, fun things, which are great, but this gets my heads all together and make their heads as large as possible in the print, and allows me to also shoot the entire family, because I can use feet all the way to their heads, but I can also punch into this, and it makes a beautiful horizontal tighter on their faces. We'll shoot both those versions so they can see which one they like. But it's just meant to give us those options to really see the people. And that's our goal. All right, let's talk about our lighting setup here. We've got two FJ400s. I love the FJ400 because it's got enough power, really, to work with the sun. I've got one on a softbox. It's working with that new Sony trigger that they just came out with. This is the FJX3, which is a really wonderful trigger on the FJ400. Allows me to change the settings much easier. Love the new triggers from Westcott. 
So we've got the FJ400 and a softbox on the camera left side. So I have a rim light on the camera right side, imitating the rim light that's already there. Um, I put a full CTO on that uh, rim light, so it gives us a nice warm sun setting kind of look. So as the sun actually falls behind the hill, we'll turn that rim light on. So we've got our key light up front, rim light on the camera right side. That's really our lighting in a nutshell. We're gonna open up the shadows by lengthening our shutter. That's gonna give us a nice strobe lit and ambient light shot. So we'd like to thank the Denadals and the Ikes for coming out and doing this portrait with us here today. Check a look at some of these other videos like that. We have other videos on lens choice and camera settings for different types of photography. I love this journey. I love to shoot. Every time I shoot, I learn something. So if you like that, check out some of our other videos. And I promise you, no one was harmed in the making of this film.